G'day. This weekend I felt in a bit of a rut and so I decided to try something I'd never done before. Um, read about it, thought about it, hadn't done it. And so uh, I made up a pan with curved sides. This is out of one piece of metal and uh, to make it I used the dolly that I uh, made up previously and uh, had to, to redress a hammer and so uh, to give me the, the, the curve I needed. So uh, this is the story of that. I bought this hammer a while back to uh, do sheet metal work with um, and it's a, it's a cyclone, it's, it's a forged head, it's quite a nice hammer. Uh, there was a crack in the handle and a bit of super glue has uh, repaired that. I'll, I may have to uh, replace the handle at some stage but that's alright for the moment. However the, the, the biggest problem, well there's two problems with the hammer. One of them is that the faces on the ends here um, have been, looks like they've been used on nails and other things as well so just as a general hammer. But the other thing is that, I don't know how easy that's going to be to see, that face is flat as is this one. Now Flat is nice, except that uh, if I'm using this for sheet metal, I want to not have that end of edge of the hammer dig in. And so if I'm if I'm got a flat face on this and I I hit it on a slight angle, um, I'll get you know a mark. So I want to put a bit of a crown on this. I've gone and just got a bit of string out uh, and uh, with a pencil and a bit of cardboard and made myself a little template. And so that's a that's a 600 radius, which is about what I'm I'm chasing. And so now I'm I'm going to uh, try and just sort of finish up this hammer head, so that not only is the head um, got a, a bit of a crown to it, but also the uh, it's it hasn't got the dings and things like that in it. Because with uh, with sheet metal work, uh, the smoother the hammer and the dollies that you're using, the smoother the finish on the metal will be. If I've got a whole bunch of pits in that, when I strike the metal on that, the metal is going to try and get into that, and so I'll have a pitted or a, uh, the reverse of a pitted appearance on the on the, 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 the metal. This is the setup I'm using to get that uh, radius, at least approximately on the face of the hammer here. Um, I've got a bit of brass picture wire here hanging from a, uh, an outrigger off the top of the bench which is just out of shot at the moment. Uh, I've made up a little stirrup held in place with a hose clamp and then I'm just running that across the, the, uh, the lunisher belt. Uh, and as you can see it's, it's, it's uh, come out quite nicely. Um, that needs a bit of a polish but that gives me a, uh, a, a, a radius uh, face. Uh, and free of dings and if I put my template up there uh, it's um, it's just got a slight crown on it so that's that's all good I've got the general crown that I want on the on the hammer face or a roundabout. Um, I'm now going to try and improve the the, uh, the finish. I was using 120 grit um, paper on that linisher, and so it's left a couple of scratches. So I'm going to try and take them out. I've got some uh, little Scotch Bright wheel type things. Uh, and they fit on my uh, uh, angle die grinder. I'm actually a Team Blue member, but uh, they don't have one of these, so well, I've had to go with the Milwaukee, but they're not a bad little tool. Um, and you can fit, um, you know, abrasive flap wheels and uh, burrs and all sorts of things. So it's a, it's a handy thing to have if you're going to be doing this sort of, of metal work. For those wondering why bother polishing the, the face of a hammer, um, for, should we say, metal, sheet metal work, particularly where you want a smooth finish, uh, it becomes very important. This end here of this sheet, I've just hammered over my dolly with the, uh, the, the polish end of the, the hammer. Um, so this is just after polishing. You can see it's quite, it's quite shiny. Uh, it doesn't take much to. Well, I just ran out of that with a with a with a rag. It doesn't take much to get that back up to a um, you know a reasonable finish. This end, I used my 
um, well, my claw hammer, my woodworking hammer. And you can see that that's, that's got a, a, a definite loss of, of sheen there. Um, you can feel a difference. Well, I can feel a difference, you probably can't. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things that the smoother that hammer is, the less imperfections you're going to be putting into that sheet metal. So uh, polishing hammers, if you're going to be doing sheet metal work, uh, particularly on things like uh, aluminium and so on, where you, where you might just want to have it uh, polished, rather than having it you know bogged and, and painted uh, it it helps to have a have a a polished uh, hammer face and a polished dolly for that matter i've just cut my blank out uh, it's basically the, the the size of the base plus an allowance for uh, a quarter of the circumference of the, uh, the curve that's going to be happening there um, this sheet had a bit of rust on it and so i marked it out and so i've got my mark out spots there then I cleaned it up and the, the simple reason for that is that the rust provides a nice content surface rust anyway provides a nice contrast to the um, to the scribed line so it makes it a bit easy to see if I hadn't done that I would have had to to blue that up but uh, there it is um, just a, a, a tip when cutting cutting a corner radii like that and that doesn't have to be terribly precise because I'm gonna have to trim that up later but when, with a square corner like that if you're using shears cut off the, the, the tip of the corner and then go around with the shears to follow the curve. Uh, having that extra bit of material there just makes that a bit stiffer and harder to manoeuvre the shears around in a curve. So if you, if you take it off, uh, it's just a lot easier to, uh, to get that, that curved feature. Here we get to the slow and tedious part of the operation. Um, what I've got to do is, using the dolly here, just work that material up until it gives give me a nice curve. Now, on the sides, it, it's not a difficult thing to do because you, you're just bending in one direction, so there's plenty of, of um, uh, room for the material to, to go wherever it wants to go. But on the corners here, if you think about it, this um, you know, end or this outer diameter is, is, has got to come back to something like that. And so this material has got to be squished in. And so what I'm doing with the hammer is just gently working that, and so I can I can use some relatively, um, you know, coarse blows here. But here it's just got to be really kid glove stuff to get that to, to curve round. And you can just see there, there's the start of the curve there, so it's working. So there's a lot more uh, work to go on that. It's going well. I'm slowly working that uh, metal up there. One thing you'll find with with sheet metal, because of the rolling process, you get um, well, people refer to it as grain in the in the metal, and so what will happen is that it, it, it'll stretch or it'll elongate perhaps more in one direction than the other. So you've got to watch for that when you're doing things. Um, however, the reason I was I was wanted to show you this was was this corner here. You can just see how that that uh, corner is kicked out there. Now, if I kept hammering that, I would get that spiking up probably uh, and buckling and then this this corner would be ruined so what i've got now got to do is work that to push that material back into the surrounding uh, material get it get it flat now what's going to happen of course is that these corners are going to end up a little bit thicker than than the rest of the material but that's that's what you're doing is you, you're actually you know trying to push that material from where it is to to, to somewhere else uh, and and you you know you, you you're gathering it up and so it's got to go somewhere so it's going to it's going to thicken up sometime later and uh, here I am um, that's a, a 25 millimeter radius there which is what it, it's it's ending up like and you know I'm probably around about two-thirds of the way there um, when I look at you know what I've got here I'm starting to get a little bit worried about how much work I'm doing to the to the corners here in particular so I'm going to give that a bit of an anneal uh, just basically heat it up to uh, well it's going to be to red hot basically because I haven't got any other way of, of, of telling this um, and uh, I'm hoping that'll take any you know built up stresses out of there so I can I can work it a bit more um, the trouble with if you don't do that um, and it fails it fails catastrophically you get a split in there and you can't really do anything with it so uh, better to be safe than sorry if this was aluminium um, I could put coat the inside with soap and then when I heat it and the soap turns brown uh, that's that's the, the the temperature cue for um, you know aluminium annealing but uh, for steel um, 
I haven't got that that cue so I'll just heat it up to red hot in the corners here and uh, let them cool well a lot of hammering later and uh, here it is um, I've got a 25 radius around the 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 corners and on the the corner corners uh, the sides in the corners that'll do uh, I need to just massage this a little bit I'm going to weld a uh, a piece around here to, to, to bring it up to uh, height but uh, and so I need to massage the sides a little bit to, to do that but um, there it is a uh, piece of flat steel uh, one millimeter thick taken to a, a form like that with uh, just basically hammer and dolly for those wondering what sort of strokes I was using uh, it was a combination of just basically hitting it but also there was a little bit of glancing strokes like that. Um, I can't tell you much more because it was, it's, it's basically a, a feel thing. You need to, uh, to try it and see what it does and, and how it's going to move and all that sort of thing. But uh, there we go. Thanks for watching. Hope it's been interesting and uh, please spread the word.